Welcome to Watch Some Pussy, my Austin. All right, so the Jake's Rolex podcast is back. Uh, I just listened to the first 40 minutes of it. I've got 20 minutes left, and it's it's awesome. Um, all right, Jake Ehrlich, which runs RolexMagazine.com, Jake's Rolex World, started a po podcast in 2008. It went on a hiatus, and just recently, he revisited it with a new episode, and it's with uh, a friend and a contributor to his his uh, blog named Danny Cravillo. Well, I, I'm probably butchering that. I, I I know Danny is French. Cravillo. We like our L's in in America. I'm not sure about in French. Uh, Danny Cravillo. That's my uh, best attempt at uh, saying the, the name properly. And um, I've mentioned him before on the channel because he he watches some of my videos and um, you know he's uh, contacted me by by mail and and uh, um, yeah it's a he's a good guy to know and um, shares the same well even a greater love for Rolex than probably I do um, but uh, it's a fantastic podcast and uh, I'll try to I don't know if I can uh, link podcasts. I probably can, but uh, if you go to search for Jake's Rolex World, you'll find the older episodes and you'll find uh, this new one. And, and the new one's sort of revamped and the music is better and uh, it's great. And wow, uh, there's so much that I could mention. Um, some information about the... Paul Newman Daytona, about Hans Wilsdorf. Um, there's so many things that I appreciated about it. I, I don't know where to start, but I'll just say one thing that sort of stood out, and and it it's something that comes up uh, multiple times in the in the podcast, and and also in the first five minutes, where it's mentioned that you know in today's consumer culture of throwaway goods, Rolex lasts. And that's one of the reasons um, that I love Rolex, that I, I've never really um, realized. You know, I look at, I look at a Rolex uh, much in the same way as, as a car, in the sense that you service it and you take it for tune-ups and parts can be replaced and it can continue and it's even I think it's even a more lasting um, investment or you know object than a car I love the fact that you know a 60 year old Rolex can continue now of course the older the Rolex the less that may be true and you're gonna perhaps have to go after market in terms of parts and and I can't help but bring up the fact that you know Rolex doesn't really support in terms of uh, you know parts older watches that's a real bone of contention with me um, but be that as it may if you have a res rel relatively reasonably um, recent Rolex it's good and 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 you'll be fine and I think you'll always be able to maintain a Rolex even if it's very very old uh, you know a watchmaker might have to make parts and they can do that and you know if it's a choice between uh, you know a watch watch a Rolex from 1940 uh, running and not running you just have to suck it up and go uh, you know do what needs to be done and, and if it means you know getting a, a part that's uh, doesn't come from Rolex well you, you do what you have to do and it's still there's a lot of um, still goodness in that watch oh, and so uh, yeah um, but you know in today's culture where you know you you look at most watches you look at most quartz watches and of course the Apple watch which uh, was mentioned on the podcast 
you know, it, they, they're, they're obsolete in, you know, the, the idea of having a 10-year-old Apple Watch, um, you know, not, no 10-year-old Apple Watches exist yet, but just imagine 10 years down the road having the Rolex, uh, having the, sorry, the, the Apple Watch that they're selling at present. You know, it's, uh, nobody's gonna want it. Um, in fact, I don't even think it would work. The battery would wear out and you can't replace the battery. So they are in no way made to last. They are made to use and to be thrown away. And the same could be uh, said of the phone that I'm holding. I'm, there's, you know, there's no way to change the battery. Uh, it's, uh, it's not, I'm not gonna be using it in 10 years. Uh, nobody's gonna be using it in 10 years. Nobody's gonna wanna use it in 10 years, but um, when it comes to Rolex, people will, you know, a 10 year old Rolex, man, that's new. It's just, his life has just started. Um, and it goes on and they continue. And, you know, a Rolex watch is interesting in the sense that each one has a life of its own that is almost distinct from its wear. A Rolex watch sort of transcends its wear, and you can see that with uh, the Paul Newman Day Date. I mean, it it's its own almost, you know, entity and its association and the fact that it was owned by, by Paul Newman uh, is a huge factor in terms of its provenance. But, um, you know, you, you take any regular person and look at their Rolex. That Rolex will continue long after they expire. That's amazing. And people will want it to continue. And people will work to have it continue. And people will service it and pass it on. And if they don't want it, they'll sell it to somebody who does want it. And they'll sell it at a profit because it's a powerful brand. And it's, uh, uh, you know, the sort of the, the quintessential consumption of, of an object that lasts of quality and an antithesis to the consumer culture and the throwaway culture that we're a part of. Check out that podcast. It's awesome. I do uh, have some advice. Uh, make sure you have a Rolex watch when you're listening to it. <laughs> I just kept looking down at my wrist and, um, and I look, I love grandfather's watch, but uh, I realized during the podcast it's time to change. Um, Anyway, take care. See you next time.